been very useful. So now let us dig into nutrition because it has been said since the beginning uh, and Eric uh, said that oils are, are useful for nutrition. They're not tolerated, they're necessary. So that's a type of information people don't have. Uh, we look for no fat or low fat on shelves, but we believe that we don't need fats. No way, it's the opposite. So we have to dig into this with uh, Sebastiano Banni, full professor of physiology at the Cagliari University and coordinator of a PhD on these um, topics of nutrition, metabolism, and the like, he's the best person to explain to us uh, what the role of fats is in diet and why they are not bad if correctly used, quite obviously. We have to have the right balance and the right quality of fats. Over to you, Sebastian. Thank you so much for your presentation. First of all, I'd like to thank the previous speakers um, because they've uh, partly touched on the topics I'm going to delve into. First thing first, let's take a look at what sustainability is. When we talk about sustainable nutrition, what do we mean? We can say that it's a delicate balance between having to find adequate food for all and at the same time preserve the environment, biodiversity and local resources. So this is a delicate balance and it includes these two concepts which are per se difficult to put in practice in real life. And when we talk about adequate nutrients, we have seen that the best way is personalized nutrition. That is to say, a nutrition that doesn't focus on the foods, but rather on the interaction between the food and several other factors like metabolism, genetics, microbiome. So personalized nutrition. And these two factors can be put together with the so-called food diversity, which allows for more biodiversity as well as for a better ability to personalize nutrition. Sure, it's not simple when it comes to food diversity. Because we don't realize that in our diet we introduce over 26,000 substances or molecules. Whereas in general databases or epidemiological studies, they talk about 1,000 substances at the most. But there is a dark matter, as it is called, uh, when it comes to nutrition, because there are so many molecules and possible interactions between these molecules that we still don't know. But for sure, there is a benefit uh, with the diversified diet. This is one of the many papers that have been published on that. But there again, um, there is a side effect. It has been seen that this is more expensive. And this is why, in principle, from the point of view of public health, governments should incentivize a diversified diet, but they should also include policies to promote this type of diet, which is not so popular. Quite obviously, they prefer less expensive policies like free from. But this has no background and no scientific evidence. The fact that a diverse diet uh, is also good for sustainability and the environment, uh, this is shown uh, in this paper on nature. This is, makes it very, very clear. And you can see that the so-called flexitarian diet, which is 
uh, as diverse as possible, not excluding any type of food, and this is very important, is the one that is uh, most sustainable uh, environmentally uh, wise. And here you can see that as compared to a regular diet based upon the guidelines, which, by the way, don't take account of many factors, the flexitarian is more sustainable. And this flexitarian diet, so as diverse as possible, is easy to personalize a lot easier to personalize, taking account of the requirements of the individual through a number of parameters that can be considered. And so these diverse diets, like the flexitarian diet, do not exclude any type of element, any type of nutrient, which instead is the case with many policies like uh, we've talked about palmitic acid and many guidelines uh, as a matter of fact uh, even say that we should take as least as possible but they forget what the nutritional role is of these uh, fatty acid which is seen as the devil but we have to remember that uh, we introduce nutrients not poisons and then also the balance between nutrients is so important. But unless they are contaminated, for sure, foods are nutritionally valid. Let's talk about the palmitic acid that has been seen as the devil. It has a very bad reputation in the literature, but people forget that it is the most widespread fatty acid, one of the most widespread fatty acids in our body. And it is also, like in a 70 kilo man, more or less like me, there are 3.5 kilograms of palmitic acid. So when we introduce roughly 20 grams per day, it is a drop in a sea. And this is the reason why we, even though we introduced the palmitic acid, the values of palmitic acid don't really change in our body. And amongst other things, it is also present in all foods. Because since it is an important fatty acid, and we will see its many physiological functions, quite obviously, it is present and important for plant products and for animals so it is present in all foods in different concentrations so much so that it would be possible to have a diet free from palmitic acid but which are I mean there are many physiological properties of this fatty acid one fundamental uh, component of the membrane, so it's fundamental that it is present in our cell membranes. It is important as a surfactant for uh, the lung alveoli, so it's uh, fundamental for breathing. It's important for regulating uh, many cell membrane proteins, and it is the precursor of bioactive molecules uh, like PEA, so it plays a fundamental role and this is the reason why the palmitic acid in our body doesn't only come from diet but we can produce it endogenously like i said a moment ago because from glucose we can form palmitic acid and this is an extremely useful system for us because under certain conditions i mean when we cannot have enough palmitic uh, acid, there is this metabolic pathway. A classical case is the fetus. The palmitic acid from the mother does not enter the placenta satisfactorily. And so what happens? That the fetus doesn't have the palmitic acid from the mother, so the fetus has developed this very high ability to produce it from glucose through these de novo lipogenesis. So, 
There is a strong induction of this metabolic pathway so that the fetus can grow and have an adequate amount of palmitic acid. And then at birth, there is a metabolic transition whereby glucose is used most especially for brain development and palmitic acid, which is always fundamental. In this case, it comes from breast milk. Sebastiano, uh, we need your final sentence. Um, one minute to go. So tell us, so what? Okay, so in a nutshell, this is the end because um, in adults, this the novel lipogenesis is very low, but it can uh, be enhanced. Uh, and we have recent findings showing that the palmitic acid in the diet can block this pathway and uh, be favorable in certain conditions. So in a nutshell, this means that in an environment uh, that is not sustainable and when there is a little diversity in diet, this is a symptom of malnutrition. Instead, food diversity with an optimal balance uh, amongst the various nutrients uh, allow us uh, to go for personalized nutrition and this means sustainable nutrition as well as a healthy nutrition that's all thank you sebastiano apologies uh, but i'm a timekeeper anyway we invite uh, all participants to dig deeper into this topic by reading uh, your paper so Palm oil and palmitic acid are not bad and they are even necessary. This is very useful. And then you've confirmed once more that we need a diversified uh, diet. So diversity is uh, the uh, leitmotif of our human activities. Eliminating things is never good. We have to balance things and we have to have uh, the right nutrition. But to be balanced, we 